Con severas multas a la carpintería o le pueden quitar la licencia. Estados Unidos es ese país, con todo en Cuba que dicen que se estaba para Estados Unidos es contaminante y todo eso. Eso también es otro invento de Cuba. Welcome to D Lab, everybody. On the bench today, I have a national NC98 shortwave receiver. A ham radio operator brought it over to me because he wants to be able to use it with a transmitter. You would think, well, that's no big deal, but it is on the NC98 because it does not have rear terminals for standby operation. So what am I going to do? Well, I'm going to modify it and give him that capability. Here we go. So here's a close-up front panel of the NC98, okay? So right now I just have a jumper wire installed on the back for a little bit of an antenna source. Now right here you have a receive standby switch. So when you kill that, yes, it goes into standby. However, most receivers have the same switching on the back of the radio. This one doesn't. I really don't know why. There's one on the front panel because you cannot use that unless you want to reach over and hit this switch and then hit your transmitter and hit this switch and go back and forth. Eventually, you're not going to hit the switch and you're going to damage your receiver. Let's take a look at the back. Here's the rear panel of the NC98. Over here, your speaker connection. You got your S meter zero adjust. Here is an accessory socket and you would think that that would have terminals dedicated to standby operation. It does not. Take a look at your schematic. Then you have a phono input, in case you want to hook up your record player, and your antenna input. There are no accommodations on this receiver currently to be able to mute it when you're using a transmitter. But I've got an easy solution. All right, here we are, underside. Remember I pointed out that phono input RCA jack? Well, there it is right there and there's nothing wired to it. I believe there probably was when it was built, but somebody has removed that. So that gave me an idea. I thought, you know, we could probably use that RCA jack as an input for muting, and I can use one of my D-Lab K1 standby boards. And there just happens to be perfect room right there. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna install the K1 board We'll wire it up to the phono plug and we'll let that do the muting on the receiver. The beauty is, is you only have about 12 volts. You simply have to ground the RCA jack and the receiver will go into mute. So let's install it. All right, so I have put some adhesive on the K1 board. It's gonna sit right there. So at this point, let me cut over to the hookup diagram so you guys can see how easy it is to install this board. So if you recall, in the past, I showed putting one of these boards into a National 183D because it had hazardous voltages on the rear terminals, like over 300 volts, okay? That's not the case here because this system that I'm gonna install is just like what they used in the National 300. So I'm pretty much gonna lift the ground going to the audio output tube, so the cathode will lift, and if you look, you'll see that we're also lifting the ground to the RF gain pot, and that will mute the receiver. And as an added bonus, I have another set of contacts that's gonna go over and short out the antenna input leads, so this thing will not only mute, but it will short out the input, so RF has no chance of getting in to the input circuit of the receiver and damaging it while you're transmitting. All right, wiring's complete. Let me go over it real quick before we test. I stole my filament supply from that rear accessory socket. So pin seven is your six volt AC. Pin six is ground, so that was convenient. Here is my standby activation line going to the funnel jack. I added a 10K resistor to ground, if you look at an NC300 muting schematic, you'll see they did the same thing. I have my antenna lead here that shorts, and then these two black wires, one of them takes off over here, goes to the 270 ohm resistor that goes to the cathode of the output tube. The other one zings up here along the side and goes back to the wiper arm of the sensitivity pot. So everything's in place. 
Let's give it a check. All right, I've got the receiver on. Just picking out some random noise right now. Just using a jumper wire for an antenna, but let's check out that standby function. So here we go, you got your transmitter right, TR switch is hooked up. Muting contacts are going to now the phono jack input. So here we go. Here's your mute. Receive. Mute. Receive. A little noise for me there, but you get the point. Nice smooth action. Okay, let's get this thing cleaned up, put her back together, and see if we can pick up some stations, huh? Alright, one thing I want to cover is, since I did not interrupt the receive standby switch or that wiring, that remains active. So you could still go to standby on the front panel, but that will not activate my muting circuit. That is separate, okay? But you still have that functionality that hasn't changed but there's one thing about this receiver that i really need to bring up to you guys it's super important when i was working on this thing i was twiddling some of these knobs and my wrist touched my plug strip which is grounded and i got poked and i thought man i better check the voltage on the chassis of this receiver and you're not going to believe what i found all right, so my meter is set up on 200 volts AC. I'm gonna take my meter, touch my plug strip ground, and we'll touch this control. Look at there, 122 volts AC riding on those controls. Envision you're sitting down with your grandkids, twiddling the knob, listening to some short wave and say, hey, Jimmy, why don't you give it a shot? And somehow he contacts a ground while he's tuning or touching these switches, he's going to get shocked and it's not going to feel good. Let me show you what's causing that and how to correct it. All right, well, first off, this has the original two prong power cord on it. You may think, well, that's really not a big deal, but it is these days, okay? Back then, they didn't have three prong cords, so the ham operator would run a ground wire to the chassis of the radio but most people these days don't do that so you're exposed to a shock hazard here's why your power cord comes in this side goes to one side of the primary of the power transformer this one zings over here through the power switch right there is a lead that goes back to the other side of the primary right well take a look right there you see that white cap right there? Well, it goes from that AC power to chassis. They did that back then to eliminate noise. So I'm going to cut that cap loose and let's remeasure our voltage. All right, there's that cap. I cut the lead loose. Okay, so let's repeat our test. I'm going to take one meter probe here and go to that control we were looking at. I'm going to go back to the ground on my plug strip. Now you can see we're at around 31 volts. That's still not acceptable. You're still gonna get a poke. So cutting the cap loose will reduce voltage, but it's not the best solution. The best solution is to put on a grounded cord. That's what we're gonna do. All right, one word of caution before you install a grounded power cord, make sure that that 120 that you're seeing on the chassis is not because you have a winding of your power transformer shorting to ground right because then if you put on a grounded cord it's going to pop the circuit breaker as soon as you turn it on so just do a quick ohm check from your ac line to the chassis make sure that you don't see a low resistance from one of those prongs to ground or you got a bad power transformer in this case we're good all right i've cut out the old two prong power cord and here is that cap that was strapped to ground. These are commonly known in the guitar amp world as death caps, okay? So it gives you that effect, or these things will short out and make you think that your power transformer is bad, okay? So I always remove these and install grounded power cords. 
Well, while I was in here getting ready to route in my new power cord, which is going to go right on through the original hole, I noticed another thing that's kind of alarming. This radio doesn't have a fuse. <laughs> There's no fuse in here, guys. So we're going to add that too. Another layer of safety. Okay, we've got the new grounded power cord installed, a fuse holder now, and the death cap is removed. It was real easy to install this chassis mount fuse holder because there was already a hole just like that one. So a little 440 screw went right through and she mounted up, no drilling required. All right, let's recheck that voltage and see what we got on the chassis. Okay, same test. Gonna take my negative probe, go to the ground of my plug strip around AC volt scale. I'm gonna go here to the switch. We see about 0.12 volts, okay? If you saw any voltage at this point, that would mean you probably installed a bad power cord, right? Because the ground of the chassis now should be connected direct to the ground of my plug strip, which would result in no voltage. Good thing. All right, it's test time of the NC98 receiver. After our safety improvements and the standby switching mod, seems to be operating great. So here is the automatic muting that you would use if you had an external TR switch. Whammo bammo, no pops, no snaps nice smooth transition and of course you can always use the standard receive standby switch on the front as designed a success and an improvement to safety you do have to take those additional steps when you're doing maintenance cover all bases because when it leaves your bench that person receiving it is trusting you for a proper repair see you again